Christmas times are coming. Yes, it is, and it's time to break out something special. What are we talking about? A rib roast, standing rib roast. Some people prefer as prime rib. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard. Listen, can you hear it? I think I hear Santa hooking up the sleigh. You have seen me do it in the oven. Yeah, simple little prime rib. Remember, perfect prime rib, the way to cook it. There'll be a link there. Also, pitchfork fondue. Prime rib, deep fried. Mm, it was good with my good folks at Certified Angus Beef. But today, folks, I am showing you a butter-infused Whew, wallered in some smoke and fire. This is going to be the best prime rib you ever eat in your life because guess what? We done had it seasoned for three days just sitting in an icebox thinking, where's the fire? I'm getting cold. So, hey, rock on in here with me and we're going to get after this. So, folks, the star of the show today is... No, 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 shit, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I'm talking about this rib roast. Woo wee! And folks, I done got me a six pounder, good certified Angus beef it is. When you get that and you go to look for a piece of a rib roast, there's different grades when you get select choice and prime. Now prime rib is, whoo, it's what we're after. Tell your butcher, I gotta feed, you know, maybe like eight or nine or 10 people. He'll figure it up for you. You want about a pound per person. This is a six pounder because it's feeding the Beacon Duke. Me and Shan probably ain't gonna get none. And when you get it out of that package, I want you to take some paper towels, pat it dry all the way over. I mean, everywhere. Make sure that it is the driest thing. I mean, just get it all good and dry because it's gonna let that seasoning adhere to it even better. You need about four tablespoons of butter. Cut it off right there before we ever start anything. Lay it on some tin foil, oh so pretty, and just cut it in little fingerlings about, I'd say maybe a half inch wide, something like that, and just lay them out across there. Put them in the freezer. Let them go about 30 minutes because we need them to set up. I need you to get 10 garlic cloves. Yep, you heard me right. And I need you to mince them on in there. Squeeze that little pistol there. Get all that goodness out in there. So we got our garlic cloves and we got our butter in there that is froze. We've got it out. I need you to take a wooden dowel rod, end of a wooden spoon, something. And I need you to go to poking holes across here. And then I need you to put that garlic in there, that minced garlic, not a whole garlic clove. To me, them whole garlic cloves, sure, they add some flavor, but they ain't spreading it throughout that meat. So with this minced garlic that we got, rake it over, pack it in that hole, just like loading an old muzzle loader before you went that flintlock. Ha kaboom -a! That's what I'm talking about. Pack it down in there all the way, every one of them. Flip it over. Now it's time to insert the frozen butter into the meat. So I want you to get some at Red River Ranch seasoning. If you ain't got some, you know where to get it, www.kentrollins.com. And some coarse ground black pepper. We're gonna use it at the last. Now, I need you to season really, really well. I'm talking all over the place because folks, too many times when people go to cook a piece of meat, they overcook the meat, but they under season it to begin with. Make sure, this is six pounds of meat. We need a lot of seasoning. So make sure you rub it in good everywhere, sides, top, bottom, everywhere you gotta go, and just make sure. Then right at the end, on these edges that are cut, both of them through here, take that coarse ground black pepper and rub some on top of that and then give it a sprinkling right here. And then guess what? Sing it a little bedtime song because it's going in the icebox it is for about three days. And just three days sitting in there all alone. Uncover it. Don't be putting nothing on it. No, that's what Shan was trying to get to me. It ain't going to be sealed up nowhere. You got to have a shelf that is clean, that is empty, and it ain't going to get disturbed because sort of like an aging process in a while, but it's going to let that seasoning get down in there and permeate. That is a big word right there. I'm going to cook this for supper tonight to feed them folks. So take it out at noon. Yep, you heard me. 12 o'clock sharp, take it out. We gotta let this come to room temperature. And it takes a while at 39 degrees for six pounds to warm up to 72. Got her ready to go. 
set out, warmed up, went over here to our little old hasty bake. You can do this on a smoker, but folks, we're gonna be cooking indirect most of the time, but we're gonna sear first, cause a lot of folks be telling you, well, when you smoke that prime rib, you just can't get that good crust on there that I really be liking. Oh, you can, folks, cause we're gonna baptize it by fire today, we are. This thing is gonna get over, get seared all the way around, then we're gonna scoot it back over on the indirect side and we're about 30 minutes a pound. But folks, you need to have you one of them temperature probes because you want to cook this, I do, for me and Shannon, the vegan duke, to about 115, 117. Then you're going to tin it and let it set. The temperature is going to rise to 120 to 122. So let's get it over here and get to searing. Well, it is time. We have got it raised up to that there where it's about that far from the hotness we do. So just bring it on over here. And folks, I need you to set it down on there. Hear that sound? That's a good sound. And I can smell beef saying, it's going to be good. So I just want you to give it a good sear, get it good and crusted over all the way around, and then we'll move it. So when you're searing this, depending on how far the flames are licking up the side here and everything else, it may take you two to three minutes, but just roll it over and keep it keep it checking because I want that good color. I want it seared in there to where it's going to say, mm, I got a good coat on it. And let's talk about what kind of smoke it's going to take a bath in today. We got us some good fogo in there, which is oak. And I don't take much folks, as you can see here in a minute, they want about that many coals on the far end because we're going to try to run a temperature of about 245 to 260 along in there. So after we got that going, we get to go in here in a minute, we'll let it down. I'm going to use some apple and some mesquite. Not as much mesquite as I would just apple, but I love to use fruit wood on a piece of beef like this because it's a more mellow smoke and it's going to just sit there and just love all over it. And it's not going to be as harsh as maybe a full blood mesquite or a hickory. Well, folks, it is time to come over here to the cool side of the bathtub. It is getting rolled around here. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint here. Let me let this down all the way. If you go there and you get this and it has got the bone in it, when you go to season it, you'll see if that butcher has cut that little bone a little bit to where he's showing you a guide map to when it gets ready for you to cut it. Now, I like to just have mine hold just right on there all the way around and I'll cut them off when I get ready right there at the end. But we're going to leave it. But if they're cut and they got that flap over there that's loose where that bone end is, when you get it seared, bring it over here to the other side, get you some butcher twine, tie it, try it, it'll make the presentation a little better but let's get it some smoke going if Shan will zoom in over here on the temperature dial it says 253 and 7 8 degrees is what it says I want you to run between 240 265 long in there because that's going to give us a pretty good three hour cook time but let's get some smoke to wallering around there on it so everything will be good now remember heat's on this end beefs on the other so we want to open this vent just a little to where we can get that smoke when it goes to flow that away now y'all might have seen this on the website already but look here kiln dried mesquite that we have left over from them spatulas and i'm going to need a little of it in there to give me a little mesquite smoke so i'm going to put about three handfuls in there and then i'm going to go with me some good apple wood because i do love some apple and some beef and folks, I'm probably going to stack them up in there and use about, I'd say, five pieces. Then I'm going to shut the door, turn out the lights. The party's going on. It is time to take a nap, it is. I don't want you to mess with it. I don't want you to do nothing. Now, you can come out here in about an hour if you think you need to check and see if you need any more smoke. But you'll begin to see that smoke go to rolling out through here. But remember, indirect heat. Meat, the heat's here, the meat is here, about 253 degrees.
ain't that a pretty sight, Biggie and Duke? Mm -mm, I mean, they be loving some beef. And folks, that thing cut like butter because guess what? There was some butter in there they was. Now, at an hour and a half in, I come out here and I put me some more apple wood on there and just a little bit more mesquite. But a six pound roast running about 250 to 260, and the big says it's time to eat, <laughs> took about three hours on the money. To get you one of them thermometer probes, and you be checking it. And whew, don't let that smoke quit rolling on it because that's what's going to make it good. And I'm going to take this piece right here. I do love an uh, end cut. So, this is a pretty special treat. Not easy, easy, easy. <laughs> easy. Oh, you, 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, big. Me and Shan sure love y'all. Y'all have been good help. You got a lot of fans, and it's time for Dad to try that right there. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. Prime time. Some real we did and a roast was good. Ooh. Praise the Lord, pass the biscuits, and give me some more of that beef, cause, mm, hey, don't forget, three days ahead of time. You need to oh, feed. Oh. Okay, <laughs> hang on, folks. That help says that wasn't much Christmas present. Here you go, there we go. As we near that time where old St. Nick might be crawling up on top of the house, and he might leave you some bills, or he might leave you a present. You know, this has been one of them years, folks, it has but we're so blessed to still just to be able to gather around and have a good time. This channel, we want to reach out to y'all and say Merry Christmas. God bless you. We love you. And we hope you have the happiest day of all, whether it be Christmas Day, New Year's Day, or Fourth of July. They are all a great day above the grass. Shan, I love you so much, darling, and I thank you for always making me look better than I do. Puppies, puppies, whew, great help. Andy, thank you for helping us edit, my friend. And as always, I salute all our servicemen and women and all our veterans and all the first responders. And I think we should have a special shout out to all them folks fighting the COVID. To the scientists, the doctors, the nurses, the ER people, the folks that are working 29 hours a day. I tip my hat to you and I say, God bless you. Everything we used in this recipe will be listed right down there below. And guess what? God bless you each and every one. And I'll see you down the standing rib roast smoked with apple smoke tray. Ooh, I gotta back up and go. We gotta rewind, cause I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Dude. This is mom it is. Look at the big. What are you doing? Big. I think you ought to get down, don't you? Get down. Oh, oh.